you were also there in the Grand Hotel in Brighton, I think, when the bomb went off. Can you tell us about that? There, there was this loud explosion. And uh, I'd heard several bombs in my time at uh, Number 10. I'd heard the Price Sisters bomb during uh, Ted Heath's time, the bomb that blew up uh, Airy Neve, the Carlton House bomb. So I knew at once what it was, and so I came to rather rapidly and thought, well, now, here you are, with the loan with the Prime Minister. Somebody is trying to blow her up, so you better do something sensible. So I uh, said to her... Um, I think you ought to come away from the windows in case there is another bomb. Now, the extraordinary thing was that the lights didn't go out. Um, so the lights uh, stayed on by some extraordinary chance. And we went across the room and um, she said, I must see if Dennis is all right. And so she opened the door to the bedroom and through the door of the bedroom, you could hear the sounds of falling masonry, which was actually the bathroom ceiling collapsing. And what I should have done is to say, stand back, Prime Minister. Uh, I'm more dispensable than you are. I think I should go and see. But not wishing to stand between a lady and her bedroom, I let her go in. And uh, it seemed like minutes, but it was only a few seconds. And she emerged with um, Dennis Thatcher pulling flannel trousers over his pyjamas. And we went out into the corridor. And uh, as we looked up the corridor, we saw what looked like smoke coming out of the door of the rooms two doors along, which I knew were Geoffrey Howe's rooms. I thought, oh gosh, it looks as if there's been a bomb in Geoffrey Howe's room. But then the door beyond opened and out came Geoffrey um, in his dressing gown, blinking. Anyway, we stood there in the uh, corridor and I said to uh, Margaret Thatcher, um, well, there's been a bomb. Um, I think what I ought to advise you to do is we must get you back to London. And she said, I'm not leaving. And at that moment, a fireman arrived and said, uh, follow me. And we followed him and uh, he took us down the corridor and we got to the end of the corridor and it was a cul-de-sac. So he said, follow me back. And we went along and as I say, the lights were still on and we went down the stairs in the Grand Hotel and uh, the, where the foyer had been was full of rubble. And so my next assumption was that the bomb had been placed down there. Margaret Thatcher broke off to see if everybody who was uh, in the front desk was accounted for, which they were. And then we went out of the back where there were number 10 cars. And the police contingency plan worked very quickly, moved very quickly into action. Uh, but at that point, I thought, well, now, all the number 10 papers are lying uh, about upstairs. And uh, also, um, the Prime Minister's clothes and my clothes and so on. So with one of the Prime Minister's detectives, I went back up, not realising that the hotel was hanging by a thread above our heads. And I packed away the number 10 papers and I packed her clothes and my clothes and Dennis's clothes. And we went down and uh, we joined the car and caught up with the party at uh, Hove Police Station, where by this time the good and great of the land in various stages of undress were being collected uh, up. And, you know, the incident we haven't mentioned in number 10, um, which in a sense was uh, one of the most memorable, was the mortar attack. And um, sitting in the cabinet room, there was a meeting going on of the Gulf War cabinet. I was sitting next to John Major. And um, what I remember clearly, I don't think it's come out in any of the memoirs, was what we were worried about was Iraq might uh, launch a terrorist attack in uh, London. And the last word I remember John Major um, uttering before the, uh, uh, before the mortar bomb exploded was the word bomb. And suddenly, there's this bomb, the room shakes, the windows um, shiver, shatter. Not, not shatter, but uh, craze. Uh, the, French windows at the cabinet, end of the cabinet room blow in. And what I immediately supposed had happened was that this was a terrorist attack and there was people had come over the back wall and they were going to appear at the cabinet window spraying submachine gun uh, at us. And uh, so I got under the table pretty quick. I found John Major was under the table beside me. And, um, but quite soon it was clear that hadn't happened. 
and we got up and restored what dignity we could. But then um, Charles Powell said, put into action the drill again, and the drill was Prime Minister, number 10 under attack, you got the Prime Minister to a safe area. And that happened very quickly. And we did get the Prime Minister to a safe area, and since it was a safe area, I followed him as closely as I could and got into the safe area too. And then after about 10 minutes, it was clear that there was no follow-up attack. Uh, we didn't know that there'd been a mortar shell. We thought it had been, at that time, we thought it had been a bomb, a uh, car bomb, outside the back wall of number 10. And um, we went through to uh, the cabinet room to Cobra, Cobra, and resumed the meeting. And it wasn't for another 20 minutes, half an hour, that we were told what the nature of the attack had been. And of course, mercifully, nobody was killed. Um, the worst thing that happened was some people, one person got a cut in the back of their scalp through a piece of flying glass. Uh, and that was the worst that happened. But um, it was another memorable moment.